Cool, I'm back. <laughs> it's actually stay. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Isaiah, and today I feel less like my head is about to fall off. Less being the key term here. <laughs> um, so I actually had this thing I wanted to talk about, but I didn't have time because... Can you hear her? I have a child yelling at me. It's not even one of the ones that I brought over. It's fucking Jessica. Um, anyway. So I had something that I have had saved on my Tumblr likes for a bit. Because I wanted to talk about it. But I couldn't talk about it. Due to a variety of factors. Either from the fact that I have certain days that I'm trying to stick with a certain topic. So the people that follow me for those topics get that information on the correct day or um because I have been extremely fucking out of it from my medication change but I can talk about it today because so long as I'm holding still I'm totally fine off screen if you see me look this way it's because all the garamis are staring at me they're supposed to be fed today haven't done that yet though have I I promise I'll get to you they don't care. They just want food. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to go over is actually a post from someone called Not Horses on Tumblr. They compiled a lot of trans androphobic posts, either from the last year, though some of the posts are older. And I'm going to try and post what I'm reading, like right over here-ish. But we'll see how well I do. I apologize. We all know that. I am currently being held together by a shoestring. So let's get into it. With the in, I have my laptop because I'm recording on my phone. One day I'll switch over to actually recording on a camera instead of my phone, and then my phone will be held up. Until then, enjoy my stickers. I love my stickers. I collect stickers. I wish to make stickers. Maybe even perhaps of you guys. They're all over here now. All of the Garamis. I'm surprised Charlie isn't over here, but I don't think he recognizes that I'd give him food yet. Anyway, <laughs> starting with the first block, uh, I'm going to start with notes about trans men. Trans men and trans women have almost nothing in common as classes. So stop talking about the trans community umbrella slash whatever as if it exists in a meaningful way. Trans men have systemic power that they can and do leverage against women, including cis women, regardless of the status or type of their transition. It's always okay to call them out for their misogyny, and you don't have to specify that you're talking about cis men unless you are actually only talking about cis men. Trans men may not reclaim the slur tranny because it's a trans mis misogynistic slur that is rarely used against them, and when it is, it's because of their proximity to trans women. And then highlighted is boys are icky. So we're gonna get into this one first. First and foremost, trans men and trans women, as well as non-binary people that fall under the trans umbrella, because as we are aware, not all non-binary people identify as trans. But these groups of people do have a series of commonalities either from growing up being considered their own gender, from just not vibing with their gender identity. I mean, hell, there is even between US-centric Western world and then other cultures who don't see gender the same way that the US people do, there is still the commonality of trans people in any of these communities do not identify with the gender stereotypes and gender roles that are foisted upon us by our culture. So at the end of the day, that very first point is wrong because even if nothing else was in common, the fact that we identify with different gender roles than we were assigned with at birth, through our birth sex, through our community, through growing up, et cetera, et cetera, that is a commonality. And that is something that's very important to talk about because in any culture, gender is a social construct and it is to everyone's benefit 
including our cis counterparts, to try and deconstruct why these roles are exist in modern times, despite everything we've learned. Also, I mean, we've lost a lot of trans research because of World War II, specifically Germans burning down these and destroying books that discussed sex history. Sex being gender and that sort of thing in this regard. So they did also burn a lot of other stuff about LGBT shit. And it's horrifying, and I'll make a video about it eventually. And it's like, they... It's a lot. So this first point is bullshit. Because even if we had nothing else in common, we have the rejection of what are what people expect of, expected of us at birth. Now the next one. The trans men having systemic power. It assumes that these trans masculine people are, one, perfectly able to pass in general public. Two, want to pass in general public. Three, have been able to do this since they were very young because I'm sorry but even if you were like me and didn't realize that you were trans until you were older you were still that person when you were younger so your experiences as a younger person are still applicable to you and I didn't have any substantial power over trans women as a child in fact, I have much more in common with them when I was growing up than I would have had with any of my male counterparts at the time. So it's, it is okay to call someone out if they're being a fucking idiot and a fucking misogynist. However, it is not accurate to say that trans men have systemic power over trans women. We don't have the platform to hold systemic power over trans women individually perhaps but in the greater scheme of things not at all so again we're just wrong here the slur tranny is a gender transphobic slur it may be it may seem that has been used against trans women more often than trans men but this is one of those downsides of being hyper visible within the greater community because trans women are so much more visible to everyone else, it seems like they get the bulk of the all the problems. And that includes things like having slurs thrown at them. However, this does not mean that these slurs are not equal between the, the two binaries, as well as our non-binary sisters and brothers and pals. <laughs> um, so I heavily disagree with this. Anyone who considers themselves trans can choose to reclaim the word, the slur tranny. Just like anybody who considers themselves LGBTQIA plus can choose to reclaim the word queer. And in fact, that's what I choose to reclaim for myself. That's why I am the queer quill. Boys are icky. I shower every day. In fact, my skin is dry because I over shower sometimes. So, pretty sure I'm not icky. I am, I'm very clean. I have some boy musk mouth now because I've been on tea for a while, but I am a very clean individual. <laughs> All right, now for the next one on this block. PSA, support boys, support bi boys, support gay boys, support pansexual boys, support ace boys, support arrow boys, support trans boys, support all boys. I love that. But oh, there's a response. No, kissy face emoji. Boys don't need support. They need to get over themselves. Support girls, support bi girls, support gay girls, support bi girls, <laughs> support trans girls, support all girls. Fuck boys, what do you need support in? Upholding the patriarchy? LMAO. Honestly, things like this is why I'm starting to consider myself less and less of a traditional feminist. Because this is the sort of attitude towards men in feminist spaces. Not even necessarily radical feminism, but general everyday feminism that's supposed to be supportive of trans people, trans men male rights um i've discussed this a bit 
where feminist circles don't give us the space to talk about men's issues. So there's a lot, there's a lot of feminist spaces that are for women. That makes sense because systemically women have had issues thanks to the patriarchy. And it's harder to see the issues that affect men as well because generally men have more power than women in today's society. However, we don't give any space to talk about how men are affected by patriarchy. I will see sort of these phrases where like men are also suffering, that sort of thing, but we never give them the space to talk. And yes, sometimes they choose to try and derail. It's in bad faith. You'll have MRAs come in and be like, hey, what the fuck? Let's talk about this on an issue that's specifically being discussed around women and womanhood. And that is totally fair. That is derailing. It's not good. And MR MRAs in general are extremely bad faith. They've taken serious issues and they have turned it into a joke at best or extremely harmful toxic places at worst. And anybody who can get past the initial, holy shit, they're talking about men's issues and that's not something that's discussed enough. Anyone who can get past that can see how awful those spaces are. But it is a problem that we don't talk about men's issues. There is a problem with boys in education. They aren't getting the attention that they need. Um, men aren't allowed to express emotions and that leads to higher suicidality rate. Plus the way that men tend to attempt to commit suicide means that their attempts are a lot more successful. Like there is this sort of stereotype that men will use guns while women will use other measures like uh, trying to poison themselves or something like that. And usually suicide attempts through overdosing or that sort of thing end up being a little bit easier to recover from than gunshot wounds. Though I did have someone in my church attempt to commit suicide with a gun and she ended up extremely brain damaged. And her daughter, who was my age, struggled a lot with this, but she survived. Luckily, my church had the support system to try and help them. But I know that there was more issues. One of the younger daughter ended up getting killed in a car accident. This family is just, they've been through a lot. But men and boys need support too. It's not fair to say that they don't deserve it because they seem to be part of the class of people that get the most privilege. What you have to realize is the patriarchy is designed for a very certain type of person to have power. And it's not fair to lash out at, say, poor white people because they are white men, because they have been indoctrinated to think that they could be this certain type of person. They are being fed the same bullshit that we've been fed. They just haven't had the chance to get out of it. And it's also not fair to try and lump in like East Asian men who live in places like the US and silence their problems because, well, they're men, so they have privilege. You completely ignore the fact that they have been completely sterilized in the US culture. And yes, part of that is so that East Asian women can be fetishized more easily. But this is still something that affects them. So let's go on to the next one. <laughs> Otherwise, this is going to be a long video, and it already is. Okay, another one. Trans men are men, even when that's not a positive statement. It's never a positive statement. So, I feel like this is very self-explanatory, but it leads back into the idea that all men are uh, predatory. Um, hate women are benefited through the patriarchy and it really links back to early rad femme ideals where you would have these separatist movements of uh, the gold star lesbians or 
um, women who got really tired of being under men or they may have been abused by men and they chose to cut themselves off entirely from men and cut themselves off from people who would still interact with men. These are the type of people that we would make fun of because they would even try to change the spelling of woman to remove man. Usually either with an X instead of the A or they would use the word womb with a Y in. And yeah, it was fun to make fun of them back in 2013, 2014. But this is what has led to the creation of TERFs and to Radfem ideology being taken in by the greater trans community and trans femme people in general. And I'm not saying all trans femme people think this or agree with it, but it is a very underlying current that you get a lot, especially when you enter spaces where they talk about how testosterone is inherently toxic, it's a poison, etc., etc. And it makes sense because for them it was. But they're saying this in general circles where there are non-binary people and trans men who want testosterone or like the changes that they've gotten through testosterone uh, and or they're happy because they're AMAB and they're non-binary or they still want those effects that the testosterone gave them for one reason or another and these people who have been hurt by their puberty and all of this stuff venting in a space that it's not it's not a good place to vent and it hurts them and even that I believe is put is centered in radfem ideology even if it's not consciously so all right next one finally a trans political situation where some trans dudes unresolved aggressive masculinity issues can shine bonus points to this guy's name being Logan this is like the Adrian joke that I've been seeing lately, all trans men being Adrian or non-binary people having names like Leaf and Stone. I mean, I make fun of Briar for their name because they're a plant. It's a very significant name for them. They put the thought into say it, um, to come up with it and that sort of thing. And at the end of the day, I extremely respect that and I love their name. Their name is why we named our dog Nettle. But this is not a joke the idea that testosterone makes you hyper aggressive and that sort of thing is a stereotype that's very common and it leads to a lot of younger trans mask individuals being scared of starting tea because you get these stereotypes of bottom growth when you may not want it hyper aggression inability to connect with your emotions that sort of thing and it's just not a universal thing so this is leading to two very harmful stereotypes also what's wrong with the name logan it's a good name i say as my name is now icarus did i say my name was isaiah or icarus god okay never mind men are disgusting and this applies to cis men this applies to trans men both are men both benefit from misogyny both are disgusting i'm gonna leave this as a trans men especially are also victims of misogyny. They're also victims of androphobia and trans androphobia. And the fact that people are just writing men are disgusting, it just goes back into rad femme rhetoric. So I'll leave it at that. But trans men, especially trans men that haven't been able to transition and go stealth, also experience misogyny as they grow up, as they transition as they are unable or do not want to pass so and that also doesn't include talking about non-binary trans mask individuals who do hold on to traits of femininity i mean hell there was a post today talking about how weird it is that uh on tiktok trans mask people are performing in high femme outfits and it's like bruh have you not heard about cis drag queens <laughs> but we'll move on there's a post going around about how misdirected misogyny cancels out male privilege and I spoke out against it and now a bunch of whiny trans guys are reblogging it with shitty commentary and just, oh my god, how do you deal with this? I don't know how to tell them they have male privilege. Once again, assumptions about these trans people online having male privilege. 
While I do agree there's a certain amount of male privilege online if you say that you are a man, this quickly stops the moment that they find out that you are trans or that you speak and you may not have a uh, stereotypical masculine voice. And also just generally, if you're having issues with people and you don't want to deal with it, block them. Curate your online space. And I say this to everyone. And I realize this creates echo chambers, but I'm fucking 28 years old. I'm tired of people being like, why are you being so mean to me? I'm like, block me. Just do it. It will make you feel better. Lawful good. Trans women. Neutral good. Non-binary people. Chaotic good. Lesbians. Lawful neutral. Bi women. True neutral. Aromatics. Chaotic neutral. Asexuals. Lawful evil. Gay men. Neutral evil. Bi men. Chaotic evil. Trans men. I may be chaotic evil, except I'm not actually chaotic evil. I am, I consider myself chaotic good at best. But this doesn't make sense because they are conflating sexuality with gender. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> and now we're on the second post. I am glad that they compiled these screenshots into like different blocks. But at the same time, it's like a lot to go through. If you think that cis men are scum, but trans men are okay, are you saying that trans men aren't real men? That's pretty shitty, SJWs. And I am not certain if the next one is connected to it, so I'm going to read it as well, and then we'll discuss both. Masculinity is the same construct, whether displayed by trans men or cis men. Masculinity is a privileged position in white supremacist capitalist hetero patriarchy. Trans men occupy that position whether they acknowledge it or not. Common expressions of masculinity include ignoring women's boundaries, enacting physical violence against women, and policing womanhood and other people. Trans men asserting what they think womanhood is doesn't fall under that masculinity umbrella by coincidence. To listen to their assertions as non-women about what womanhood is is just as dangerous as letting cis men tell you what women are and what women are like. Trans men deciding they belong in women's spaces doesn't fa fall under the masculinity umbrella coincidentally either. Trans men being masculine and hurting women is not a coincidence. It is a, it is a systemic, oppressive framework. So I do think those are connected. And I agree with the first part that I said, where when you say cis men are scum but trans men are okay, that's really sketchy of you. And then the person's like, oh no, they're also scum. So they get points for being consistent in their hatred of masculinity. They get points taken away for several instances. But the one I'm going to highlight here is the idea of trans men and trans masculine people in women's spaces. We do need to be in women's spaces. Because if we are AFAB, if we have a vagina, a vulva, a uterus, ovaries, we do need medical care that is specific towards those organs, gynecological care. Um, if an AFAB person wants to get pregnant, they have to be able to access these routines. If they get pregnant and they do not want to be, they need access to abortion rights. And it's really hard, especially if you are someone who is completely stealth to get access to these because they look at you, they see a man, they look at your license, they see the M, and they assume that you do not need these uh, reproductive care needs. And there is also something that was pointed out to me recently where uh, someone can choose to rape and a, a trans man and try and get them pregnant, and in many places, because testosterone is dangerous to a fetus, they can be forced to detransition. That's, it's not a good look. And to finish this part, the absolute irony that you're saying 
trans men can't define womanhood, but you are choosing to define masculinity. Because in this case, womanhood is pretty much synonymous to them with femininity. So, and this is coming from someone who only recently realized that the hatred I was having towards masculinity was misplaced internalized transandrophobia. So, one of these days I'd like to go through and talk about positive masculinity since I made a video wondering if there was such a thing. But for now, let's move on. Trans girls soften to be cherished. Trans boys, a grotto of discomfort. While I agree that I am a grotto of discomfort, this is uh, infantilizing of trans women and also just more stereotypes that we don't want. Like, we, I see trans women on Reddit talking about how they don't want to be considered a cat girl. I want to be a cat boy. Let me be my cat boy self. I've drawn myself as a cat person since I was like 11. But this just hurts both sides. That, that's all I can say. Trans men, just as shitty as cis men, but more accepted than you will ever be in women's spaces. Again, there are certain women's spaces where trans men do need to be in. Reproductive care is the biggest one. But I would also argue that until there are spaces made for men to speak about things like rape and uh, sexual abuse generally and other things, we need to be included in spaces to talk about this because right now there aren't really that many spaces that are not filled with toxicity and hatred towards women for men to talk about what they've been through. They're not taken seriously by the greater public because of patriarchy. Patriarchy hurts everyone, including the men that it's supposed to benefit. Valid. Women. Trans women. Non-binary women. Any other person who's not on the binary spectrum was born as a woman and still acknowledges that they are a woman. Well, that's gross. Not valid. Cis men, trans men, especially you, non-binary men. Any other person not on the binary spectrum is biologically male and still identifies as a biological male. Men are scum, XOXO, exclamation point, D smiley face. Dwayne, what do I do with this? He left. So I guess I just move on. Shrimp, dicks, and true scum. Please remove yourself from online and forward into the trash. Funny enough, this is like overlapping into my trying to discuss on Reddit how not all people that go on testosterone experience bottom growth. Because I have been on T for off and on for about two years and I've had zero bottom growth, and my doctor said that if I was a cis male, I probably would have had a very small penis. So I guess I'm one of the, I'm one of the people that need to go into the trash because I have a small dick. Also, this is applied to trans women who have a very small penis, because, like, not all trans women want to get rid of their penises. So if they have a naturally small penis, are they considered a shrimp dick and need to go into the trash? Or is it just towards people who identify as men? The half of the trans population that doesn't have to worry about physical abuse is trans men, in case you're wondering, lol. That's not true. We've already talked briefly about how trans men can be coercively raped. Generally, statistics about trans mask abuse, where they are the victims, gets covered up because generally we're not seen as men. And so we don't get our statistics built up around our identity as trans masculine people. Very often, we will get lumped into women's statistics. So... You can't say that we don't experience abuse because there's no statistics about it. Because our statistics are being erased. 
And again, it's one of those things about hypervisibility where trans women issues get so much visibility that trans men and trans masculine non-binary people get completely erased, as well as non-binary people that don't express any sort of gender preference or um, gender expression. The idea of a trans community is hella fucking toxic in that it allows for trans men to feel entitled to resources and spaces by and for trans women. Okay, we're just gonna move on, because <laughs> I've discussed this before. There is no such thing as cis privilege. I do not and should not have any reason to treat trans men and cis men as being separate classes that oppress trans women. While cis men may be cis, everyone not classed as women benefits from patriarchy. Cis women also oppress trans women along a cis trans axis. But let's expand that, expand this out a little. What do we say when we say cis privilege? It means that we are saying that both cis women and men have privilege over trans women and men. However, this doesn't make any sense. It's been well documented in many discussions that trans men exercise significant privilege over cis women. A better understanding of the transphobia dynamic is more accurately described under a trans misogyny framework. I mean, they almost had something there talking about how cis women have privilege over trans women. Almost. But they decided to Ouroboros their own asshole to make trans men out as just as big an abuser as cis men. And as I've stated several times, I don't think cis men benefit nearly as much from patriarchy as radical feminists make them out to be, especially when you take intersectionality into context. Trans men who fail to acknowledge that a tweets that tweets trans women exclusionary feminist i think harm trans women and protect trans men are complicit in the continued ex oppression of trans women turfs do not protect trans men they either woobify us into being confused lesbians who have been brainwashed by the patriarchy to hate their gender to the point that they felt like they had to escape by transitioning, and thus TERFs try to reach out and save us, or if someone has transitioned too, too far, or they seem like they can't be saved, they also become the enemy, and they are harassed, they are threatened, there is again the chance of coercive rape, etc, etc, etc. Because if you're a person who does not think a woman can write, why are you even listening to this video? So, we're going to move on. Tweef is a weird word. We're a minority who's oppressed AF, but because we're men, it's okay to say you hate us all. Oppressed AF. Literally wear honey. I mean, we could talk about how black and brown men have oppression how trans men are oppressed and then that like coincides even more with being black or brown especially in western society especially in the u.s we could talk about how uh, intelligence perceived or real can also be a point of oppression um financial status slash class that sort of thing but we know they don't care because they say they're intersectional, but they're not actually. Trans person. Hi, I'm trans. The cis TM. OMG, yes, queen slay. Trans person. I'm actually a trans boy. The cis TM. I am so sorry. He trans boy, sweet innocent flower prince, who must protect at all costs, you adorable pupper. Here's a flower crown. You're so small. You can do no harm. I love you, sweet precious baby. Trans person. What the fuck? Trans men really out here thinking they're oppressed because cis people find them non-threatening. I mean, there's some that find trans men non-threatening, and then you have a black trans man who is transitioning to a point 
where he could be seen as threatening. It's not a one size fits all. There's a spectrum, just like with gender and everything else. Also, if you want to be woobified, find you a partner who woobifies you. I don't want to be woobified. There is no suspicious. There is no specific struggle of a trans man. If you think there is, typically a trans woman has faced it, and much worse at that, so really only trans misogyny is a thing, since they do have issues we will never face. I'm assuming this is from a trans man, because they say they have issues we will never face. And I feel sorry for them, because they're still drinking the, um, the juice. I only recently stopped, so... That, that's all I can really say, is I hope that they can open their minds and realize that there are very specific points of oppression that maybe they're not experiencing, but that trans men can and do experience, especially trans men of color. Speaking as a white boy. Speaking as a phantom of the opera. White boy. <laughs> trans men were socialized as men, and as such they benefit from misogyny rather than suffer from it. Men are not oppressed, uh, oppressed by misogyny. Women are. I was not socialized as a man. There is a lot of uh, issues around the idea of using AFAB, AMAB socialization that I wasn't totally aware of when I started making my posts, my videos about this sort of thing. And I need to go into more research about it, but generally, very generally speaking, if someone grew up thinking they were a girl until the point that they realized they were not, they likely were not being socialized by the outside world as a man. There are points, there are people that experience really good things where they weren't expected to perform a certain gender or whatever, but there are just as many people like me who grew up thinking that they were a girl and the world treated them as a girl, and they treated themselves as a girl. Okay, back. It um, said it was full, so I had to finagle to make my phone realize that it's not full and I can continue. So, let's move on to the next slide. Starting with, trans men are disgusting. They're literally all just out there performing masculinity. You can claim that you are taking back masculinity and reshaping it to a positive, but you can't do that. Only women can take back masculinity. Only women have been hurt by masculinity enough to reshape. Only women can truly understand the harm that masculinity causes. There can never be a positive masculinity that is performed by a man. All male masculinity is toxic. How about, how about we don't unpack that one right now because that was my mindset like a month ago. So it kind of hurts to read it from someone else when I am finally unpacking the trans androphobia in my, in my heart. Okay, so let, let's keep going. When you say trans men don't oppress cis women, do you mean cis het women, or do you mean trans men don't inherently oppress cis women? Because trans men can certainly oppress cis bi women and cis lesbians. I'm assuming this has something to do with the idea that a trans man could be tricking a uh, bi or lesbian woman into dating them. Because there's a lot of stories of uh, trans people not realizing that they are trans until they are in committed relationships. So, like, if you are a gold star lesbian, you could be uh, tricked, quote-unquote, into being with a man if your partner comes out as a trans man. That's all I can think of for that. It seems really stupid. Mainstream trans discourse is pretty centered around telling trans women that we're men. Like all this, sex and gender are two separate things. Gender is an infinite cornucopia of aesthetics. Self-identified women. Some men have vaginas. Crap is entirely about excluding trans women 
and putting us in harm's way to be murdered or whatever for the sake of trans men's attempts to gain access to women's spaces. I mean, gender is an endless cornucopia of aesthetic. At this point, as a gender abolitionist, I do see uh, gender as mostly performative, but again, there's this disconnect that trans men are trying to access women's spaces, and there are women's spaces, women's spaces we need access to because they haven't degendered those spaces yet so that we can get reproductive health care and that sort of thing. Otherwise, we really like to have our own spaces because a lot of binary trans men also don't feel comfortable in cisgender male spaces because there is still a lot of toxicity and in inherited problems that I've already talked about, so I'm not going to go into too much, but the mindset around a lot of men, unless they are actively working to undo it, is still just toxic. And when you have been someone that's been on both sides, you have a really hard time just becoming another one of the boys. A sampling of the trans men I have met in person. Kel, Aiden, Aiden, Jaden, Caden, Skylar, Lance, Duncan, Elliot, Ren, Re, Kai, Kai, M, Elijah, Clyde, Clove, Alexander, Sebastian. There's nothing immoral about having an uncommon name, but the trans male drive for hyper individuality seems to reveal a deeper truth of y'all's lives that, especially in queer and feminist spaces, you often have a vested interest in sticking out, something that is not generally advisable or accessible to trans women. Women with a Y, by the way. That really undermines the concept of a universally experienced transphobia, doesn't it? It's almost like we don't have anything meaningful in common, isn't it? Or maybe these people just like their name. Like, I'm sorry, but I have known many Jadens, Aidens, uh, Skylar, Lances, Wrens, Elliots, Duncans, Elijahs, Clydes. I've met many of them. And sure, maybe I think that Sebastian is someone who's just really into Black Butler, but that's not on me. I was Isaiah for a very long time, and now I'm going by Icarus. And the inherent uh, YA fantasy novel protagonist of that name still gives me pause on wanting to call myself that socially. But fuck it, I like the name Icarus. Does it make me stand out? Sure. But... It's a name that I have a much closer association to than Sam, Alex. Well, I can't say Sam. Sam is my best friend. But Alex, um, Dylan, any of the quote-unquote normal names. And hell, my nickname is normal. It's Russ. I have stolen that from a former crush of mine who was named Russell. And it is now mine. I have inherited his power. And this... Okay. There are reasons why transphobia can be universal, and yet there are still aspects of it that are towards binary identities, or more importantly, how non-binary identities, I say more importantly because it's overlooked so much, they don't exist at all in people's minds. That's huge. Why don't we talk about that more? because we end up getting this trans femme, trans mask binary thing going on, and trans men are trying just to be heard, period. And the moment that we finally are accepted in the greater community, I feel like it's gonna be easier for non-binary people to be like, hey, what about us? Can we exist now? <laughs> it's like that meme where you have the, the trans women struggling like, they're getting heralded over here. Trans men are kind of drowning, and the non-binary people are... They're dead. They're skeletons. I'm so sorry, y'all. Whoa, boy, Tumblr is so mean to the tor poor trans men's with a Z. It's probably because we're collectively sick of your shit, to be honest. Nobody respects us, buddy. You never earned that respect in the first place. And you know what? You haven't earned mine. Because you're a piece of shit. Trans women stated reasons for going into porn, so that I can eat food and sleep in a bed. 
trans men stated reasons for going into porn. I think it's hot. Go figure that trans men would feel safer at a woman's college. Any man would feel safe in a space where he has violent coercive power over every single person there. These are like put together like they're from the same post, but they're so totally different. I've got to unpack them individually. Porn. You are allowed to go into it because you think it's hot. You are allowed to go into it because you need the money. Under any version of any of this, but you are allowed to go into porn for the same reason you are allowed to go into any other job. You may like it. You may need the money. There is no ethical consumption under capitalism. Porn is especially hairy because of the inherent ability to abuse shit. And there needs to be discussion on how we can safely regulate the porn industry to be safer for everyone involved. But this isn't it. <laughs> these, are, these are shitty takes. And what's wrong with trans people wanting to go into porn to you because it's hot? What's wrong with that? If I wasn't so scared of sex, maybe I'd want to go into porn just so that we can have a fucking dominant trans man who isn't getting fucked up the pussy. I'm telling way too much about my personal preferences here. <laughs> um, Alright, next one. We need to take the we need to take back the trans community from trans men. Trans men don't belong in our safe spaces. I don't want men in places that were built for trans women. It's not safe. Trans men haven't done anything for trans rights. Trans women have been at the forefront of trans and queer rights movements throughout history, while trans men have not done nothing for us. Trans men almost always pass and don't need a safe space. They're men. Men do not need safe spaces. Trans women shouldn't need to make room for men. End of discussion. There's so many to things to go into this, I'm going to try and keep it short. So, no. If there is a space that is explicitly for trans women, then trans men do not need to be in that space. Fair. However, general trans communities and general blogging sites like Tumblr or Reddit, it's harder to maintain that distance. That's why some places like 2X chromosomes will say men are allowed to comment and observe, but this is inherently a space about women's issues, and that is totally fine. That is why when someone tries to derail a conversation to men's issues in that conver in those spaces, in a post that is not explicitly about this, it's bad. But it's still a public space that people can go to. The only way that you can like guarantee not having those spaces be at least observed by outsiders is to make it incredibly private or in real life and the first one especially i mean there's a whole big drama thing about canceling some tr poor trans person because his fetish porn blog got exposed because someone decided it was okay to expose the greater community to his kinks and he wasn't me he's not just blurting it out on youtube for everyone to hear <laughs> so okay um next one we don't there men have done stuff for trans rights but it doesn't get discussed for very much the same reason that until there was a lot of pushback against it trans and brown people's contributions weren't discussed. For a very long time, the cis white gay men were considered the forefront of the queer movement. And I think as we continue to work through this, we'll start realizing that everyone's had a contribution in some way, and it's important to highlight these. I should really go back to my men, trans men in history, because that would be a really fun series to do. And I liked the one video I did so far. Trans men almost always pass. No. And don't need a safe space. I've already discussed how men do need safe spaces to discuss their issues that isn't dominated by MRA culture. Trans women shouldn't make need to make room for men. In general, trans spaces, you do. That's it. <laughs> trans men are men, which is why they don't have a space in feminism unless they are uplifting the voices of women. Stop bringing up trans men when you should be acknowledging trans women and our issues. 
What do trans men have to deal with? Not trans misogyny, not gay bashing. They've got their easy to purchase binders and packers because of course they can't feel like a man, a man without a penis. Of course they want to define manhood with cock. Trans women need your help. We're the ones dying. We're the ones facing actual oppression. Trans men are men, correct? Um, then we immediately go into what I've talked about, how uh, men don't have space in feminism. Even though there are extremely important men's issues that we need to d discuss and deconstruct, we don't have the space for it. So thank you for highlighting my point here, because this, this is perfect. This is exactly what I'm talking about. <sighs> Stop bringing up trans men when you should be talking about women. We exist and we have issues. When we bring up trans men talking about the JK Rowling letter that she got an award for, it's because most of that fucking letter was about trans men and AFAB people who are transitioning away from their gender to fit in with patriarchy. It was about us. But you're the one that's making it about you because it's so much easier on both sides of the media to make the absurdity of bathroom laws sensational. And then you also expect trans men to be the ones to go into women's bathrooms and take the hit when they get hurt for y'all. Then there's this whole thing about packers and binding. Not everyone can bind. I can't bind. I couldn't bind when I was working as a dog groomer because that inhibited your breathing. It is something that can be just as dangerous to people who choose to bind as people who try to tuck. But it doesn't get talked about. <sighs> Honestly, the tucking thing doesn't get talked about enough either, and it should be brought up more. But I don't, that's not my space, and this is not what we're discussing right now. Um, and not everyone packs. Some men find it affirming. Not everyone does. I don't pack because it feels weird. And I am terrified of using a stand to pee because I'm going to fucking be like any other dude and miss. And then I have to clean it up because I'm not a monster. Also, the sheer amount of people that I see online asking where to purchase a binder that works and is safe. Anyway. <laughs> the combination of trans men's male positioning in society combined with the widespread lie that they understand woman leads to a unique and sinister type of misogyny. Cool. Trans men, as men, are taken more seriously than women. When they purport to be experts on women's lives, they will often be listened to even more than cis women are. This positioning of their objectivity occurs regardless of whether they explicitly claim it or not. That is to say, trans men are respected and listened to about women's experiences more than women are, even when they parrot feminist theory about listening to women. For me, I do have some knowledge on how a certain type of woman is treated. My experience is not universal, and therefore, I expect there are trans men who do not have this experience. However, this is bullshit. There are trans men who are shitty, just like there are trans women and trans people in general who are criminals. We don't expect cr criminals to speak for all of society, even though general society tries to make it out like that. So why are you expecting all the trans men to be subjected to the same standard just because you found a tra shitty one? That is spouting bullshit. That is my question for you. Should I start considering y'all to be exactly like Blair White? I don't think you want that. When trans dudes lament that they don't appear trans enough, asterisk, a part of me understands. I too sometimes wish people didn't read me as a faggy cis dude. The other part is screaming, dude, shut up, you have no fucking idea. I kind of wish other trans men would like not talk about their issues to literally everyone because people don't want to hear it for good reason, and two, they're not issues. Once again, I'm pretty sure those are from this, uh, uh, same general post, but two very different ideas.
trans men get considered to be like butch lesbians and shit all the time. We literally just touched upon the JK Rowling letter where we were confused lesbians who are trying to transition away from our true gender or whatever. Also like, we have issues just like anyone else. I've gradually been centered in the frame. That's gonna be issue later. Anyway. Actual question. Do trans men have to deal with anti-trans cis gay men in the same manner that trans women have to deal with transphobic radfem lesbians and turf lesbians? Trans men don't have to deal with shit, lol. Well, luckily for me, I've not had much experience with anti-trans cis gay men. I've mostly had issues with um, men thinking that they could make me straight because I have a vagina. Um, but... No, we deal with shit. We deal with the TERFs, and we deal with people who either try to fetishize us for our bodies, or they aren't interested in vagina, they're dick only. So therefore, even though we are men, they make it out to seem that they don't want us because they don't see us as men. So yes, it is experienced. Just not by me personally, because I am in a happy relationship with another ace person. Alright, last one. Hopefully my phone doesn't die. Blow, bl blow back trans misogyny, or why CAFAB trans people don't suffer transphobia because transphobia doesn't exist. This post is for trans women and CAMAB trans people only. Quick note, CAFAB, CAMAB is essentially assigned male or assigned female at birth but they are including the C to be coercively assigned gender at birth. I didn't get it either at first. Transphobia is only properly understood if it is a thing at all as spillover damage from cultural transmisogyny and misogyny. This isn't even really an idea we aren't already used to. Most people, myself included, don't deny that patriarchy has negative consequences for some men. It imposes structure and enforces it violently on men, but at the same time, it gives them a great deal more freedom and power. But those consequences don't equate to oppression in and of themselves without any further hierarchical influence on them. There isn't really a specific term for that, as far as I'm aware. It's a consequence, a reaction, a repercussion, a byproduct. We don't call it manphobia, and misandry is a shibboleth for a ridiculous impossibility believed in and only by the most self-obsessed. And so most of the structural barriers that exist for trans men, medical gatekeeping, state refusal to acknowledge gender, denial of other social services like housing or employment protections, were specifically designed with the thought of barring trans women from accessing them. The fact that they also in negatively impact men is by definition an unintended consequence or in some cases an ancillary benefit. All right, if you're wondering about the sudden angle shift, I, my phone has stopped working for some reason, even though I it, it has space. It just doesn't think it does. So I have to figure out something to save all of those photos. But until then, let's finish this. So I just read this really stupid long post and it bothers me for so many reasons because there's a little bit about this that I agree with. The, specifically the idea that patriarchy as it was intended and as it gets used a lot the harm towards men is a huge side effect and not necessarily the goal but I heartily disagree with the stuff that misandry is a nothing um, that trans men are only hurt by the patriarchy because of violence towards trans women. And I completely disagree that there are barriers that only exist because they are meant to hurt trans women. The reproductive health care thing is a huge one. It is I don't I don't even know how to begin describing it because it's well it's a load of bullshit that they think that the reason trans men are kept from proper reproductive health care is because they are barring trans women from reproductive health care that is necessary for them. Because generally speaking, trans women don't need health care about uteruses and stuff. Generally speaking. 
Anyway, we're almost done. Little known fun fact, trans men have the smallest, most irrelevant, tiniest, almost no place in the LGBT community. I mean, this is accurate, but not for the reasons they think. We have a very small place in the queer community because people keep putting us there and uh, trivializing our issues. The issues of trans men. The question of whether to pee in a relatively safe bathroom or a relatively safe bathroom. Ignoring the fact that cis women have been harassed and beaten up by people because they were mistakenly seen as trans women. What do you think trans men are going to do if they are forced into a women's bathroom? And also ignoring the fact that a lot of trans men don't feel, feel safe around cis men. For many of the same reasons that women don't feel safe around men. <laughs> Um, very occasional pushback on presence in women's spaces. I feel like this entire long-ass post says otherwise. Formerly barred from being mass-murdering overseas enforcers of America's brutal imperialist regime. Okay. Dysphoria. Sad face, sad face, sad face with a little tear. Too cute. Lots of feelings unreliable information about how much creatine can safely be ingested. It, it's really just a continuation of the same from everything else. The idea that our issues aren't actually itch issues. The, um, the dysphoria the one is especially telling because if anything, an, a universal trans experience could be seen as some sort of dysphoria, be it social, physical, whatever. Like, even when you are not a true scum and you say there's no need for dysphoria to be trans, which I am one of those people, there is, on some level, I believe, uh, of social pushback against the role that you are assigned to. Like, you cannot experience gender dysphoria or uh, dysphoria about your body, but you can still dislike, to some extent, the role that you were placed into at birth and what was expected of you. I would consider that still dysphoria. So... If anything, dysphoria is basically a universal experience across cultures and identities. But that was, that was the last thing. So I just want to read Not Horse's little addendum down here, and then someone else's, because these are very important to me. Not Horse's says, So I wanted to put this together, not because anyone needs to see all of this stuff, or read every word here. Sorry, I did that but because I think compiling these kind of posts is useful when we're talking about trans mask issues in the community. There is, frankly, way too much for anyone to go through and dissect here. True, it's exhausting and it stressed me out just trying to find the posts to make this. I'm not going to go through everything here and point out why it's all wrong. I don't have that kind of time. It's okay, I do. Um, not that I really went in depth. What I'm saying is that there is a problem, not that the problem is worse than anybody else's, not that it's the only problem, not, and not that anyone else has problems on par with or even worse than this. But there is a problem. Trans masks are made to feel unwelcome, intentionally or not. There is dwindling space. There is less and less room for our voices, less support for our perspectives, less compassion for our experiences. There is a hostility growing, an assumption that trans men are inherently violent people, are the oppressor. That we must be stopped, that we must be kept out of the community, that our oppression doesn't matter, or worse, doesn't exist. I lay this out for you because I want it to be clear why I and others are trying to build space for a healthier community for transmasculine folks. Spaces that support and validate them, that are compassionate, trusting, and understanding, without allowing room for misogyny or transmisogyny. I want it to be very clear why I make the posts that I do, why I think it's so important to change the broader understanding of trans masks struggles and transphobic oppression. I'm exhausted after compiling this. A lot of these posts are recent, this year, or within the past few. Some of them are older, some of them are from my own inbox or comments off my posts, and I left many of the posts I found out too. 
prioritizing the ones that make sense without the surrounding context and the ones that contain their entire message stated and easy to understand. These posts are from other trans men, trans women, non-binary people, from within our own community. I just want folks to understand that this is something that exists, that people believe in that can and does permeate spaces in ways we may not see right away. This is important. This matters. This isn't okay. And I, when I first saw this post, I was like, hmm, this might be something that is useful to put into a digital format. Well, I mean, it's already digital. To put into a video format, audio, for you people that don't want to read. I don't like reading anymore. What's happened to me? And, but I was like, no, I mean, it's already out there. I don't necessarily need to contribute. I could talk about it in my own words. And then, and then Not Horses reblogged an attempt at a, a text ID. It's very popular and actually very useful on Tumblr for people to transcribe screenshots into text as well as transcribe images. That way people who don't have the best vision are able to appreciate the posts that are around. It makes sense. So they tried to transcribe everything just like how I just read everything for y'all. And I'm going to avoid the actual ID because I want to get to what they said. They got through a lot. Uh, I will say that. But then they end with, I'm sorry, but I can't transcribe any more of the images. I tried. Hell, I've tried for months, actually. I've been working on this post for months on and off, trying to image describe everything, cleaning up the grammar, adding notes for clarity. Fuck, I even managed to finish it up this afternoon. And then the page reloaded. I hadn't saved. I lost approximately 13 post descriptions. So again, they got through most of it. I can't physically finish this description. The contents of this compilation, as I am sure is prominent in the amount that I did manage to describe, is filled with violence, vitriol, misgendering, belittling, erasing of oppression, speaking over, infantilizing, villainizing, mockery, and general hatred. Every time I pick up this post to work on the descriptions, it triggers my anxiety and depression so aggressively that oftentimes I disassociate after. I'm sorry, I can't finish them. If anyone wants to finish what I've started, I finished the first three slides. I'm sure it doesn't need pointing out how much gender essentialism is present in these posts. The lack of intersectional politics. If we keep going on like this, talking about each other like this, pushing each other out of our spaces and cannibalizing our communities and tearing each other to shreds, there will only be pieces left for transphobes to easily sweep up and throw out like so much trash. It is all of our best interest to listen to each other with sympathy, boost each other's voices, and uplift each other where we can. We are stronger united. And that's the end of this video, essentially, because I don't know how to describe it in better words than not horses and this person who put themselves through months of anxiety-triggering disassociation to try and provide this information to people who could not get it from screenshots. I can't put it better than them. I, I definitely tried. I had to comment and joke and get frustrated at my technology for not cooperating with me to try and get through this and it's taken me about an hour but y'all it's it's not right for people to be treating other people like this and honestly, this is why I am tired of seeing so much anger and antagonism against whole other subsets of groups of people. Because it's very easy to make someone the enemy. It's easy for me to look at bait owls and be like, holy shit, y'all are sh awful. It's easy for me to look at radfems and think the same, even though I have some of that radfem ideology in in my brain for so long i've talked about it 
there's videos on my channel because I'm doing a vlog a day where I don't know what could be positive masculinity because until very recently that switch didn't click. It's important to talk about, you know? And I think because it's so easy to hate on the people that seem to have the power, the cis men, <coughs> the white men that were in charge of me growing up, that didn't really give me good role models for masculinity, it's so easy to blame them. Like, it, it's their fault when they're not the super rich people, they're not the corporations that are destroying our planet. They are just affected as affected by everything as we are, even if they don't know that. It's so easy to make someone the enemy and forget that there are actually people that wish us harm, that choose to consume everything and take up the space that we need. So that's, that's going to be it for me. I agree with the person that tried this ID. We need to stop cannibalizing each other. We need to realize that we've all been hurt. And we need to give each other the space to realize this hurt without demonizing someone else because it's not necessarily their fault. And notably, I'm not talking about Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk because they are people that benefit from patriarchy. They are the people to whom patriarchy has, our patriarchal society is designed to benefit. Not poor white people, not trans men, not men generally, not women, not trans women. It's the people that hold the power that our society is built to protect. <sighs> Take care of yourself, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. I promise I'm going to talk about something better and I will try not to have technological issues <laughs> again. This is going to be fun piecemealing together, but if you've listened to all of this, go, go get a drink, pet something, hug a stuffed animal, <laughs> go outside and touch grass for a minute because I, I definitely need to do that. But yeah, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a good day. Bye.